or 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 Greg. Yes, I'm getting a question back here. Coming. Microphone coming. It's stumping me. Hi, right, thank you for the lecture. It was very entertaining and as well educational. Um, I'm wondering what the story is then that we can tell patients as to why these exercises help as opposed to just giving them that biomechanical excuse of this is what it is. Oh, that, oh that, 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 that's a nice one. Because then it's like, you know, why does exercise help? Which is tough because then we, it's, it's actually very difficult. And this is why it's difficult to prescribe exercise for people in pain. Because we don't really know what our true target is. Right? What needs to change to get someone out of pain? Right? Like, and I always, that's why I start the, our, the, our little course with talk about tendinopathy. What actually has to change to turn that tendinosis into like possibly having less nociception or maybe how we deal with the nociception? We're not really sure. That's what's difficult. So the other way to look at it is what's great about exercise? Right? What has exercise been shown to do rel related to pain? So one would be in the short term, most people get contraction-induced analgesia. If you start loading up a joint, you know, slow, in, the, in the short term, you can have less pain. Another thing would be, sometimes it's good to do an exercise into pain, and we have something called habituation, where we can actually habituate to painful activity, and slowly over time, the nociception is the same, but our response to that nociception is less. Or we could say that it's, if you start doing an exercise and you have less pain or you don't have a flare-up, what does that tell you? You sort of get confidence in your body again, right? That you're not weak and that you're not frail. So it challenges, you know, your, your thought process of what, going, what goes on. And then maybe that's sort of a psychological intervention where you're less catastrophizing, less rumination there. You know, you have feelings of like greater self-efficacy because now when you're doing exercise, you're using your body again. And if exercise or that physical activity is important to you, now you start resuming those meaningful activities and, you know, you are you again. So exercise itself, probably, I would never say everyone has to exercise, but physical activity and doing things you love is probably more, more important. And sometimes, if I'm pessimistic, I think we kind of mess people up when we tell them they have to exercise. You know, because it's okay to help with pain, but it's certainly not a panacea. And then you have all these patients like, oh, I'm in pain. I'm so sorry. It's my fault. I didn't do my exercises this week. And then you got to say, well, what is it that you want to do? Well, then you can do that instead of your exercise. So it's patient led. Does that, that help at all? Yeah. And I, there's more to it. I, there's a paper by Stillwell in the Canadian Chiropractic Magazine about like the sort of biopsychosocial aspect of exercise. And there's one with, um, I forget the first author, but I think both Mosley and Ho well, Hodges and Fala have one out, but it's not that BPS, but Mosley has one out with, I forget the first author, where it's like the biopsychosocial effects of exercise. So I'll look that. You can email me if you want it. I got it. Yeah. So we had another question towards the back here. And while the microphone's heading over there, uh, uh, could you uh, say something about some of the resources you provide uh, that you make available to clinicians? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, uh, on my website is the Recovery Strategies book, which is just like a 70-page book you can download. It's free. It's set up to be like every page could be an infographic that maybe addresses one thing related to pain. So you can either use the, use the whole book, or maybe it's just a concept about pain that you want to get, pain and recovery that you want to get across. And then I have like, I don't know how to disseminate this because it's weird, but I have like a free public um, folder on Google. I don't know how. I should put a link on my web. Yeah, that's the internet. Yeah, that's what I'll use. <laughs> yeah, you just saw some problem solving in real time there. It's like a free folder of research papers and stuff like that. Yeah. All right. Another question? So pretty much I'm a recent grad, so just watching this uh, kind of just blow my mind. <laughs> so I recently started seeing something on, I think it was Facebook or Twitter or something, where it. people were arguing over static posture and its role in injury. Yeah. And people were arguing about different research papers that they were coming up showing that it does and a bunch of other people arguing that it doesn't. And saying that it's more of the postural strain rather than the actual posture itself. Can you kind of elaborate more on that or if you know any background on that? I mean, to, to me, it's, again, it goes back to, I mean, no doubt if you do this all day, your neck might be sore. But that's why we have nociceptors, right? That's why none of you right now are getting like an ass ulcer, right? 
And you know what joke? A seltzer. <laughs> it's like my Greek god name. Guy. Free of ass ulcers. A seltzer. Anyways. Uh, but your nociception will catalyze that movement. And if it's going to be a problem, you're going to get out of it. Like, what, who cares if your neck is leaning forward a bit? Or if it hurts, you'll move. And if not, you'll just adapt to it. The loads are so little. Like, what, what would the problem be? Right, so I, I never even understand the, the plausible explanation for how uh, posture could be related to pain. I mean, this isn't great for function, right? You're, you can't lift your arms up. So there, it's like I would advocate working on getting upright regularly if you want to lift your arms up over your head. But in terms of pain, it just it never seemed that plausible to me. And then we're seeing that now. There's that recent paper by uh, Philo, Philo. He's the last author out of Brazil. It's like a massive study with, you know, 18 to 21 year olds in text neck position is not even associated with pain, right? So does that help at all or? I mean, it, it's one of those, and, and in practice it doesn't make a difference. So if it hurts to do this, what are you gonna do for a little bit? Well, don't do that. Do you, do you know what I mean? Or, or, and if you can't do that, we say, well, this might be painful. Well, that's not the only thing that might be driving your sensitivity. What else is going on in your life that's sensitizing you? I don't know if that helps. We've got, we've got time for just like one or two more questions. One more. And those of you that are, again, presenters, I have a plane at presenters and panelists and instructors, please come gather over here. Like right now. Yeah, like now. Um, so, one, so one question I'm going to jump in with. I know it is. Uh, is when, when, coming from your background. Yeah, uh, is, Canadian. In, in biomechanics. Debonair. <laughs> That's not where I was going, but yeah. Coming from, coming from your background in biomechanics, at what point, like, how was that transition of, of becoming more comfortable with, with what we now consider a biopsychosocial approach? Oh, no, I had no problem with it, because the biomechanists I worked with when I was younger at a Waterloo, the occupational biomechanists, they knew then in the 90s that just changing people's workplace mechanically wasn't enough. You needed buy-in. That's where participatory ergonomics came from, getting the people, who the stakeholders, to change the workplace. We knew psychosocial factors were huge with occupational pain and injury in the 80s. So none of that stuff was new. And, and, I mean, and so I never had to make some big shift. The two chiropractors I worked with when I did my master's, they were doing their PhD, Kim Ross and Dave Bresnik. They like, just dismantled all the stuff for me. So I, I, I never had to go through the trouble that other people might have. It's funny, none of this stuff is new. No one is saying anything new here this weekend. No offense. <laughs> 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 you derivative hacks. Like, <laughs> it's not. It's not. It's just had trouble trickling down from the powers. I don't know why. Okay. I don't know. It's just easier to make someone stronger, I guess, than to talk about the biopsychosocial. It's just odd. Okay. I guess. Let's get let's get all the uh, 